Everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Thank you for tuning in. So we have just been told a little hush hush on the DL and the down low that there was a murder here 13 years ago. Mrs. Patrice didn't want the tenants to find out about that because, you know, thought that'd scare everybody away. So let's ask about it. Let's ask about it. An unsolved murder. What do you know about the incident? Uh, I don't think I'd better go into any more detail, Mr. Hyde. Come on, you've told me this much. Thing is, someone involved in the incident is rather close to me. There are also those who ke are keen to forget about the incident once and for all. Please, understand. Uh, I'm just not happy to continue discussing it. Ah, uh, one more thing. What is it? That Rex Foster guy seems to be after information concerning that murder. He could be a reporter. The more I think about it, the more it fits. No, there's more to that. There's more to this, man. A shady character like him would be a perfect reporter for one of those gossip mags. I'll bet money that's where he's from. Could be. Changing the subject, Mr. Hyde, uh, have you decided who's going to get your vote? I haven't quite made my mind of. The media seems to be focused on Hugh Speck, the ex-congressman. I don't think we've ever even seen the other candidates yet. I personally don't like the idea of him winning, though. Really? Why's that? I just find that guys like him with police backgrounds and such can be a bit suspicious. Not that, you know, I'm saying anything about you with your police background. I'm not mentioning anything about you or anything like that. I've got a friend who swears the guy was on the take during his days on the force. So on the take meaning like on the run or like doing something suspicious because that's what they said about Bradley too. It's a bit of slang that I don't quite understand unless it's put in context. He said he was also into racketeering among other things. We're talking about Hugh Speck, right? I've never heard these rumors. Well, it's politics, right? Everyone's at least a bit corrupt. It won't be easy for whoever becomes mayor. Lowering the crime rate will, crime rate will be tough. Ain't that the truth? Say, did you hear about the robbery at the jewel, jewelers near here yesterday? Sydney puts a newspaper down on the table. This kind of crime gives people like me the jitters. It reminds me of a very similar incident a while back. Dad? Yeah? We've got orders queued up here. Can you come back to the counter for a while? Sure thing. I'll be right over. Duty calls, Mr. Hyde. I'll catch up with you another time. Do you mind if I take a look at this newspaper? Not a problem. Take your time. Wow, we learned a lot of very pertinent information there. Sydney makes his way back behind the counter. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, there's so much to think about. Rex Foster. Okay. Eh. Sydney's newspaper is on the table. It reads, it's the lady! Wait, so who is she? Who is she? December 19th, 1980. New development in serial jewel robbery cases? With regard to the succession of jewel burglaries that have taken place recently, the Los Angeles Police Department announced a new lead that the culprit could be a jewelry theft ring called Condor. So Con Condor, Condor is coming back. Condor is coming back. Based on the information that a woman with a black hat, with a, with a black hat had been witnessed at the crime scene before the incident. This group once frightened the whole nation, and there are fears that their reign of terror is beginning once more. Hmm, the woman in this article. Sounds just like the woman I saw outside the building yesterday. What do you mean sounds like? You mean looks like, right? <laughs> looks like her. Things have been more hectic than usual since yesterday. Guess there's only one thing to go one thing for it. If I think back over the events, maybe I can clear a few things up. Ah, uh, it's time for the chapter review. Let's do it. I'm ready. Whoa, my eyes focus are splitting apart. December 19th, 1980. My alarm clock woke me up as I, as usual, but after as usual, but just after I got myself back to sleep, the phone rang and got me up instead. The one who woke me, woke me up with a ridiculously early phone call was my mom. Right. It was mom who decided it would be a good time to call then. She's currently living in New Jersey by herself. After I finished speaking with mom, Rachel called. Both she and mom had some very similar stuff to tell me. They both said, they've been called by Rex Foster. Yep. That's right. Both Rachel and mom said that they had that they had received phone calls from the same caller. They said his name was Rex Foster, and they were keen to find out whether he was an acquaintance of mine or not. After catching the TV show about the candidate whose speech Ed went to hear, Tony got me caught up in some crazy situation just like always. 
Who was the second floor occupant that swore Tony stole her ring? Her name was Marie. Right. It was Marie from room 206. She'd somehow gotten it- got it into her head. She'd somehow got it into her head that Tony was a master jewel thief. I was concerned- I was coerced into taking a look around Marie's room to prove Tony's innocence. Turns out, the ring had just fallen between some furniture. After I proved Tony was innocent, he expressed his gratitude. He should have expressed it even further, mostly specifically in monetary value. As we talked, he mentioned that he knew I used to be a detective. Tony got that info from... Dylan. That's right. After squeezing him for facts, he finally told me that it came from Dylan. Dylan's the quiet guy who lives in 304. He takes care, he takes care of the general repairs around here. He found my name in an article from a four-year-old newspaper. Funny uh, coincidences like these seem to happen around me. As the day went on, I had the urge to go to Lucky's Cafe downstairs. Figured I'd head down there, grab a coffee, and take a breather. Imagine my surprise at finding none other than Rex Foster there. The cafe owner told me Rex had been asking questions. He was asking about... Uh, an incident 13 years ago? Yep. Right. The owner told me that Rex had asked about what happened 13 years ago, when the apartments were still a hotel. He turned out to be the same guy who'd been calling around for info about me. Now I find out he's after facts surrounding what happened in the past year. Unluckily for me, he chose not to let me in on his secret and left. December 19th, 1980. Despite the apartments being due to close, I spent the entire day embroiled in conversations with the other residents. Turned out to be pretty useful for gathering facts on past and present events here. Especially the unsolved murder that happened 13 years ago. The sudden appearance of Rex Foster in the cafe today made me feel... uneasy. And set my mind spinning back to the mysterious order sheet I found in my room. I think I'm just beginning to register the fact that there's something more to this building than meets the eye. There's some sort of secret to be found here. I'm sure of it. And I'm gonna spend my days of unemployment focusing on this. Instead of looking for a new place to live or new job or anything, I'm gonna dig up the secret of these apartments. Yeah! You can now read the events in the novel. Nice. Yes, let us save our progress for 10 billion years. Yes, good. Uh, yes, let's overwrite this file. Nice! Wow, okay, okay. It's all set up, man. Everything's set up. And now we just gotta sniff it out and, and um, fill out the details. Look for those clues. Let's do it. I'm excited. Let's go. All right. Yes. So same day, I think. Unsolved. The truth about the past. I love this. It just like looks so... It looks so like edgy and emotional. He's like, oh yeah, I'm thinking I'm brooding. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love the superimposed images. It's super great. Next day, December 20th. Okay, Saturday, I'm guessing. All right, let's just go to the weekend. Another lazy Saturday morning and I was still dreaming. In my dream, I was standing in front of an old window somewhere. The last window, in fact. Beyond the glass stretched a vast blackness through which I could make out a faint figure facing away from me. I pounded on the window in an attempt to get the person's attention, but just as the person noticed my voice and began turning around, my eyes opened, and I was awake. Ooh, I wonder who it was! Who was it in our past that we were dreaming of? My damn phone again! I let slip a few choice words as I wearily slide my arm out towards the phone. We can't put cor uh, uh, curse words. We can't put curse words in this game, so we just describe it as such. Hey, handsome. Good morning, Rachel. Rachel. Something wrong? You're not your usual chirpy self this morning. Yeah, your call woke me up. The sound of that phone pulled me out of this crazy dream I was having. Did you have a late night or something? You could say that. Had some things on my mind and didn't hit the hay till dawn. Uh, forget all that. What's so important? You gotta call now. You gotta call now. There's a message from Ed. There's something he wants you to answer right away. Seems he wants to know if you still feel like working for Red Crown. Oh, so he didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He 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 actually wants us back. I'm assuming this is like happens regularly. That he regularly fires us and brings us back. <laughs> that doesn't seem very good. It seems like an abusive relationship. He what? Well, do you? Of course I do. Thought so. Rachel, 
You don't think the old man's beginning to regret firing me, do you? Didn't think he felt remorse. I mean, what else would he be feeling to let you back? You quite done? Maybe you'd like to explain to me exactly what I have to regret? Ed! You're the one who should be on your knees! If anything, getting rid of it a no-good bum like you is a breath of relief. I think you've made your point. Just to be clear, I don't regret booting you out. But it has been on my mind. Even had a strange dream about it. A strange dream? The window! The person we saw turning around, it was Ed! We saw each other in our dreams! Oh, so lovely. Yeah, it was pretty messed up. You were in it. Lying dead by the roadside. Oh my god, whoa, okay, yo, whoa, whoa, that's a scary dream to be- Don't tell me about that, I don't want to hear about that, that's scary. You're right, that is messed up. Not exactly a premonition, though, unless you've got plans to off me yourself. Yeah, well, careful what you, careful what you wish for, I can, I can grant that for you right away, you no good bum. Still, not a great feeling to see the guy fired dead by the roadside. You know what the worst part is? Well, I'll tell you anyway. It's waking up with that image of in your head and feeling genuinely worried. Worried, eh? Think about it. There can't be that many guys out there willing to take on a lazy-ass bum like you. The tough love, tough love here. Can Y'all, can't you just be straight out? I mean, Hyde is to blame here because he is a slacker, so that is hard to deal with, so he needs to shape up, but like, can't y'all just be honest with each other? And even if you did find someone, they'd likely fire you in three days, tops. So if I don't take care of you, how do I know my dream won't come true? Aww, Ed. So what are you saying? It's not like I like you or anything. I'm a reasonable guy. I figured you got enough going for you to make me give you another chance. But mark my words, this will be the last chance I ever give you. My last chance, got it. I've heard that 10 billion times before. So what's it gonna be? Do you accept? Yes, I do. Then it's settled. I'm not gonna just bring you back in, though. No way. I'm gonna think of a way to test just how loyal you are. You'll be hearing from me. Now, he's gonna assign us to, to find the Scarlet Star. He's like, you got that weird-ass order sheet that sounds impossible? All right, if you can do that, you're in, okay? That's gonna be it. That's gonna be it. Anyway, I've got things to do. Ed, wait up. What is it? I wanted to ask about that weird order sheet we talked about before. Thought I was pretty clear about that. Throw it in the trash! If the client ain't happy to go through me, we don't do the job. Simple. Rachel, you're up! Batter up! Hey, Kyle. You're still sweating over that sheet, huh? Yeah, can't forget the damn thing. Just can't seem to figure out why it came straight to me. It's puzzling, I'll give you that. Not only that, I had a run-in with our mutual friend, Rex Foster. You did? Yeah, I caught him skulking in the cafe in my apartment building. Real shady guy. Seems he's been snooping into my past, too. I want to find out all there is about him. That's where you come in. Don't suppose you could, uh, do a bit of sniffing around, could you? Will do, handsome. I'll give you a call as soon as something turns up. I'm counting on you, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, hon. You're the best. Thanks, Ed, too. Thank you for putting up with this lazy bum. I twist the top of the tap, and a jet of cold, refreshing water streams out. I put on one of my trademark suits, get a nice little shot of my very muscular back. Great, looking good, looking sharp. Who is it? My buzzer suddenly sounds. Who's there? I'm so popular. The moment I, people are all coming to me left and right. Oh, I can just answer it. I can just answer it from far away. Wow. I think that's new, honestly. <laughs> I think that's new. Maybe they wanted to make it more uh, convenient for the player. Just like how I could answer the phone from really far away. Mrs. Patrice. Glad I caught you while you were at home. Is there something I can help you with? Come now, Mr. Hyde. Are you telling me you've forgotten our chat from the other day? Which chat would that be? Well, do you remember what we discussed or not? Uh, Mrs. Patrice. Of course I remember. Don't have a clue. Uh-oh. Of course I remember. <laughs> You're sure about the rent, right? Precisely. I'm impressed the matter hadn't slipped your mind. We haven't gotten any money since then. I thought we'd find some lying around or something. We haven't gotten any money. How could I possibly let my highest priority fall by the wayside? 
Good. I'll be expecting both this month's rent uh, and last month's rent. Four hundred dollars in total. Roger that. Then I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Mrs. Patrice, could I ask you something? Perhaps. What is it? I overheard some gossip about an incident that happened here 13 years ago. We shouldn't be bringing this up with her. She didn't want anybody to find out. She's definitely not going to be happy to discuss this with us. And she kept trying to like put off the, you know, discussing about like why the building was getting torn down. And like, she clearly doesn't want to talk about this. This is the last person we should be talking about this to. Uh oh, are the rumors true? Now, Mr. Hyde, I thought you'd know better than to pay attention to idle gossip and rumors. I really must be on my way. Hmm. Mrs. Patrice walks away. Time to pay up, I guess. Doesn't sound like anything a trip to the bank can't solve. I'm pretty sure I've got enough left in there to cover it. Hang on. Today's Saturday. The bank's closed. To make matters worse, the ATM won't recognize my card anymore. Now I'm really stuck. Oh crap, what are we gonna do? How the hell am I gonna get my hands on the rent money now? Wait, I think I might still have some cash stuffed into the wallet in my suitcase. Like $400 worth of cash? If I put that together with whatever cash is lying around, I might have $400. Damn. Okay. That sounds like a lot of money to be carrying around in the 80s. Just, just chilling, just sitting around in there. Okay. Uh, well. My case lying flat on the table. My wallet, how much money is in here? Please save me. Two dollars. One dollar. One dollar bill. Whoa, we just have 380 sitting around our wallet. Holy cow. Okay, convenient. Cool. I take $380 out of my wallet. Why are you just carrying all that cash around? My god. Like, that's a lot today, but that was way more back then. So, holy cow. Um, okay, so, so loose cash. What is this? Hip flask. Um, so money lying around. Where would I have money lying around? Does he have sock money? Does he have boxer money? <laughs> 380. Not everything, but almost there. Now to scrape together the last $20 and pay up. Where am I gonna find 20 bucks? Oh, the, 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 this thing. The, our piggy bank, but it's a whiskey jar. No, stop interrupting me. My buzzer suddenly sounds. Who's there? Stop. Oh, I can answer the door from all the way over here because I have long, stretchy Mrs. Incredible arms. There we go. Imagine him st um, standing by the by the window and he stretches his arm all the way. What do you want, Tony? You've got to be kidding me. Hey there. What did I do to deserve this early morning visit? <laughs> He's so blunt about his feelings and Tony doesn't care. They're a match made in heaven. You're not trying to get me involved in any more shady arguments, are you? No, nah, man, it's nothing like that. And what is it? If you want cash, I'm not lending it to you. It's something you're gonna wanna hear, Hyde. What makes you think I'll wanna hear anything you have to say? You're gonna wanna keep it close to your chest, though. But he, he just rolls everything Hyde says off his back. He's used to it, he doesn't care. Basically, I got wind of a surefire way of winning big bucks. There's no way we can lose, man. No risk at all, and that it sounds very risky. I'm out, I'm out, Tony. You stand to get 10 times the amount of cash you put in. 10 times! 10 times does sound good. Don't fall for it. Don't. Kyle, this is the last guy you want to trust with anything financial or any, and really anything. Don't trust this guy. If it's that good, why aren't you there, why aren't you there raking, it, raking it in? Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's a minimum amount you need to start. I'm not lending you money. Uh-uh. I don't even have that. There's definitely something fishy about this. So that's what I came to talk to you about, buddy. If we pull our resources, we could make a killing. I'm wasting my time just listening to this crap. Huh? My phone again? You don't have a problem with me using some of your money on this, do ya? I'm ignoring you. You're gonna lend me some cash, right? My phone's ringing. I really should answer it. Oh, come on, man. Help me out here. I'm in a tight spot and I really need your support right now. I gotta answer my phone, I'll see ya. Sorry, I'm gonna get that. I'll answer it from far away. I'm, I'm gonna answer it from right here, it's not even moving. The phone's ringing. Hello, I hear a stern voice on the other end of the, hello? <laughs> I hear a stern voice on the other end of the phone. Who is this? Oh, Mr. Hyde, this is Margaret. Mrs. Patrice. I'd just like to say that I'd like the rent paid in full by the end of the day. B by the end of the day? 
Yes, Mr. Hind. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah, see you. Uh oh. <laughs> no, Tony, no. This is now. This really complicates matters. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Look, Tony, you're in a tight spot. I'm in a tight spot. I don't got time for you. I don't have time for you. I'm in a tight spot. I need my money, dude. So getting back to what you were saying. Oh my God. What do you mean by a tight spot? Uh, it, it's nothing. D don't worry about it. You better not be lying to me, Tony. No way, man. I'd never do that. Besides, you got your own problems, right? That was Mags on the phone just now. I noticed how you were speaking. That's the, only, that's the only person you would speak politely to, man. <laughs> when she wants something from you, there's no stopping her. She was on the phone to me not long back. If I don't strike it rich with this deal, I'm never gonna settle the rent. What deal? Tony, the deal you were talking about. Is it just some kind of gambling scheme? Uh, uh, that tight spot you let slip was your rent, right? No, man, what makes you say that? You're just chasing dreams, Tony. If you gamble away your cash, you're gonna lose. You think I'm gonna lend you cash out of my own pocket just like that? Maybe you should try working for your money. That's harsh, you know that? I got the message. I'm out of here. Tony leaves looking less than happy. Good, you stood your ground. I that, that was the right thing to do, Kyle. Okay, time to get your head straight. What's it gonna be? The, 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 the jar. I wanted to open it. No more knocking on my door, no more phone calls, nothing. No interrupting me. I'm trying to sort out my rent. There's an empty whiskey bottle, and it's got money in it, so let's take it. Inside is a load of money I've saved up. Got quite a bit saved up- uh, got quite a bit saved up, too. Do I have to smash it open? Um, uh-oh, here I go! Ha! Drop! Oh. Oh! <laughs> My bills are stuck in there. Do you- did you not think this through, buddy? Normally- well, with old piggy banks, I think they smashed them because, you know, they always show them doing that with a hammer, which is a shame to me because what if the piggy bank itself is super cute? So they, I guess that, that's when they started installing those little rubber stoppers on the bottom. You didn't think this through, did you, buddy? Maybe if I shake it around. Is this a like, mini game? Eh. You know what this this is? Um, There's a Super Mario Party mini game just like this where it's pieces of candy. It's pieces of candy. They're really hard to get out. You have to use the Joy-Con, and it, it's like really, um, it's awesome because it's like gyro sensitive. So if you twist it, or, twist the Joy-Con around, it twists the bottle around in all directions, and then you just have to keep shaking it and get all the weirdly shaped pieces of candy out and be the fastest one. That's what ma that makes me think of. I'm really bad at that one, but it's pretty fun. Well, a little more cash fell out. We've got change for the vending machine. Yeah! Woohoo! Change! I love change. Still no bills though. Just five coins. I'm gonna need to break the bottle to get the bills. Could smash it on the table. But if I damage the furniture, Mags would probably have a fit and charge me even more rent. Better go find something else to break it with. Uh, the tools, the tools upstairs. Uh, well, they weren't a hammer per se, but you could easily, just as easily use them to knock it against this thing to, to break it. So I would, I would think so. Okay. Let's leave it off there for this episode. In the next episode, let's find something to break that open with. But I think the first thing I'm going to do is run downstairs and, and go into the vending machine. I'm probably going to be stopped by like 10 billion people along the way. They're all going to get in my way of my of my vending machine conquest. And I'm going to be very pissed at them. But that's okay. All right. Join me next time. This is Axis. Over and out.